Okay, the Siat Mishmaya. No one's going to be left behind. No one's going to be left behind. The whole vision of Mashiach is that, that is, you're running, you know. Is that everyone's coming, the Siat Mishmaya. Everyone's going to have the Tikkun. We're going to see the great fixing for everybody. There was a famous letter that was written by the Chafetz Chaim. Right at the end of his life, in the month of Kislev, Tov Reish Tzadi, this is the early 1930s. And the letter said like this That the mitzvah of loving your fellow, included in that mitzvah, is the mitzvah, amazing we learned this this morning, is the mitzvah of giving good advice to another person. And the mitzvah of loving somebody else is that you give them good advice. I mean, that's a great mitzvah. If you really love somebody, you want to help guide them on the right path in life. And says the Chavetz Chaim, and this great pain that you should feel, that the pain that you should feel, knowing that if Elijah the prophet would come right now, and Mashiach would come, and Elijah would come right before we receive and greet Mashiach, so, what do you think Eliyahu is going to want to do? What would Elijah the prophet want to do as he reveals himself? Well, there's something that we know about Eliyahu Novi, is he likes to learn Torah. So, Elijah the prophet comes now. The Chavetz Chaim is living with this. He's saying, Mashiach is going to come, and Elijah the prophet is going to be the one that comes before Eliyahu Novi. And Elijah the prophet is going to want to learn Torah. He's going to speak with every single person in learning. But if somebody is not an expert, now look what the Chavetz Chaim points out. This is something that he pulled down from the highest echelons of Shemayim. If somebody is not an expert, in at least Seder Echad B'Shas, one full Seder of Shas, that means either Moyed, Zrayim, Kodshim, Taras, Nazikin, Noshim. If he's not an expert in one Seder, Lo Yochal Adabar Ben Limud in Eliyahu Novi. He's not going to have the ability to really speak and learning with Elijah the prophet. Eliyahu Novi likes learning Torah, and he's going to want to speak to every single person in learning. And the Chavetz Chaim says, if there's somebody out there that doesn't know Torah, well, you should feel bad, and therefore, if you really love them, the good advice you could give them is to help them become an expert in one full seder of Shas. The sad part will be he won't be able to have that experience with Eliyahu Novi at that time. He'll have to catch up on his learning, and later on, he'll be able to have that experience. And the Chavetz Chaim writes, You don't feel for your fellow that he wouldn't be able to receive and have that experience with Elijah the Prophet? And therefore, said the Chavetz Chaim, He wants to give a good piece of advice. People that are so involved in just the grind. Nobody works 9 to 5 anymore. They work 9 to 9 the next morning. You never stop working. You're always like on the thing. So he said, I'm trying to really make sure this piece of advice goes out to everybody. That however much you work, make sure now that you make it your focus to become an expert, lefachot, at least on the riff, he says the riff, 
The riff is the Reval Fasi, the great commentary at the back of the Gemara, a halachic commentary of the riff on one Seder of Shas and be an expert on one Seder in Shas with the riff. And if you do this, you will be able to speak to Elijah the prophet in learning. Now that's an amazing thing. Number one, just think about how the Chavetz Chaim just loved all of us so much and was, was screaming, just help. Making sure that we know Torah. And he also is hinting to you that the access point that you need to speak to Elian Novi is one Seder of Shas with the Rif. It's an amazing that he said it with such clarity, like, become a Bucky in one Seder of Shas with the Rif. That's like your entry point to Elian Novi. Eventually, people will know that. But in the beginning, Elian Novi is going to come to Asia Torah. He's going to, so no, who am I meeting today? Who's gonna, who am I going to speak in the sugiyas with? So you want to have at least one Seder with the Rif. I'm talking to myself, Hashem, please, to know Torah with the Rif, to be a Bucky. It's important to take note. The Chovetz Chaim also pointed out, like the Torah says, Lo yidach nidach, that nobody will be pushed away. Like we also mentioned from the Divrei Shalom yesterday, as Mashiach comes and there will be different waves of going and greeting Mashiach, that in the end everybody will go and everybody will be able to see Elian Novi. But you don't want to have to wait. You want to be able to do that now. Because when Mashiach comes and Elian Novi comes, it's going to be clear whatever work you did, that's going to be clear. Whatever effort you put in during this time when the world was still not in its fixed state, that will be obvious to everyone around. Everyone will then, during the time of Mashiach, be learning, like the Rambam says, that it's going to be a great time because everybody's going to be shtaging. And you're going to have this opportunity to make up on all the lost Siddharim that we weren't learning. But you want to do it now. The first Belzerov, Shusi Ganaleinu, revealed something wondrous to us from the Shvili Derekiah, that in the days of Mashiach, there's going to be a special Beisden. A special Beisden set up when Mashiach comes. And the Tafkid of that Beisden, it's going to be a very specific Tafkid. They're going to have one mission and one mission only. The entire Beisden's mission, right, what does Beisden represent and stand for? It's a house of judgment. Beisden means they're going to they cut to the truth of the matter. And there's going to be a special Beisden set up. Why will there be need to have a Beisden during that time? The Beisden will be set up for one thing and one thing only. The only mission of this Beisden is going to be for the purpose of what's called to be achra'i, to be responsible, lebilti yidach memenu nidach, to make sure nobody is pushed away. Essentially, the entire purpose of the Beisden is going, they're going to find any glimmer, any ray of redemptive quality in that person and make sure that they can finish their tikkun. That everyone, everybody will be part of the great, great final unfolding without getting into like pure evil things. However, it's not, you know, totally... But everyone, everyone will be finding that glimmer through this special Beisden. And it was revealed that we know one of the rabbis that will be on that Beisden. You know one of those rabbis are? I can see the Rosh also being on that Beisden. The bell, this is, the, this is a couple hundred years ago. So unless the Rosh is a reincarnation of the person I'm about to say, which I wouldn't be surprised, then... Um, this would be another great person. And when I tell you this person, you might all want to run out and buy a safer. It happens to be one of my Rebbe's favorite, favorite farm in the entire world, and he hooked me into it. And it's so clear when you read this safer that he's just, he just loves us and he's just trying to help us. Yes, yes. Can I get another guest? Sure. Uh, Levi Yitzhak, the So you're very, very close. I wouldn't be surprised if he's also there, Levi Yitzhak. Because he was 
the Kedush is like, of like every Jew. That's right. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's there. The Bnei Yisachar. The Bnei Yisachar. The great Bnei Yisachar who wrote the Sefer, Bnei Yisachar. And he goes through all the months of the year, all the secrets of the months of the year, and tells you how to tap in to be an Eved Hashem all the time. How to tap into God energy through the entire year. So, he'll be on that base then. B'nai Sacha. I don't think they have it in English, mm-hmm. but it's, uh, it's worth it. The whole Sefer begins also with, uh, usually quoting from the Sefer Yitzira, which was written by Adam Harishon, later revealed again through Avram Havinu, Avram Havinu. And this is, uh, this is a Sefer that we are, have take very dear to us, where the Sefer Yitzir goes into the special Kabbalistic meaning of every single month, that every single month corresponds to a Hebrew letter, it corresponds to a different body part, corresponds to a different one of the tribes, corresponds to a different bodily function, it has specific energy. The months of Tammuz, Tammuz and Av that we're in now correspond to the eyes. And also correspond to the letter Chet and Tet, which are not great when they're put together. So we have to do extra mitzvahs during this time. And now I want to end by telling you something from the Yismach Moshe. So the Yismach Moshe was a great tzaddik. The Yismach Moshe essentially spent most of his life doing one thing, yearning for Mashiach. And like we mentioned, any time that he was stirring outside, his Mashiach here, it was all about Mashiach. And he was very close to the Chayzim Lublin. So the Yismach Moshe heard some of the great things of the Rebbe Lublin, and he wanted to go to Lublin. So on his way to Lublin, the Yet of Lev wrote, who was the grandson of the, Chiz, of the Yismach Moshe, who was the grandfather of the Satmar Rebbe, he was wondering why he didn't see by the Chayzim Lublin seemingly the simple meaning of The Shulchan Aruch says that it's a fitting, it's the right thing for anybody who has the fear of heaven, the awe of heaven, that he should feel a tremendous pain that we don't have a Beis HaMikdosh. And the Chayzim Lublin was famous for being very labedic, very openly simchadik and happy. So he wondered like why, at least on the simple level, he didn't seem to carry himself in this way of, of like contriteness and feeling pain that Hashem's home is in shambles. Now, we know the Chayzim Lublin was called the Chayzim, because Chayzim means the seer. It didn't just mean he could see far. It means he could see spiritually far. He could see spiritually into things. So when the Yismach Moshe was traveling to Lublin and had this thought that, I wonder why the Chayzim Lublin seemingly doesn't have such a connection to this halacha, at least on the outside, of being in pain over the base of Mikdash. So obviously the Chayzim Lublin picked up on that thought while he was still in Lublin. And when he thought this, the Yismach Moshe said, He davened that he hopes that he gets that the Rebbe will tell him the reason why. And while he was davening, he realized that Chazal say the following thing. The Gemara says the following thing. Habol attire, if somebody comes to purify themselves, Messiah Isa, it says that they'll be helped. If you want to purify yourself, God will help you. But he had a bit of a question on it. Because the word Messiah, is that singular or plural? Messiah with a nun at the end. It's plural. 
If it says somebody who's coming to purify themselves, it should say Messiah, he'll be helped. Why does it say that he'll be helped? It sounds like there'll be many people helping, or, or many helping. Seemingly, it should have said Messiah. So he realized, Rak Bichlam Baloshan Rabbim, Shamasayim, he realized, Shagamat Sadikim. The fact that it says somebody wants to purify themselves, Messiahin, means who is helping him. It's not just Hashem will help him, but all the righteous people will help him also. If you're really trying to do the right thing, you'll get this Messiahin. There'll be Tzadikim around that will help you. Shered Melublin, Yoshev Loyal, Shelosay, Belisha Yishaloysay. So he said, I'm going to go, and the Rebbe is going to answer. He'll help me. I won't even have to ask him the question why I don't see on him the kind of contriteness that I thought there would be. And he'll also help me. So when he came to the Rebbe in Lublin, what do you think happened? So the Rebbe immediately answered him without him saying anything. And he said the following. You should know we also cry very, very bitter tears in the wee hours of the night. We also cry that we don't have a Beis HaMikdash. And we have tremendous pain that Hashem's home is in ruins. However, since there is such a concept of you should be an oval beliboy, that a person should be in mourning in their heart, but you should be very, very happy on your face. Therefore, you don't see it on the outside. And the Rebbe Lublin also said, I really shouldn't have said this to you. I'm revealing kind of secret things from within me. But because the Gemara says, Habal attire, somebody who wants to know the right thing, Messiah so it doesn't just say Messiah, it says Messiah, that other people will help that person. I decided that within that, this is what the Yismach Meishu was thinking in his head as he was thinking of this, that I'll also help you to understand this. So we're all on a journey right now of Habal attire, we're trying to purify ourselves trying to be better, and Hashem is going to help us. And we have to know this is a time that we have to give it everything we have for Torah and mitzvahs and reaching out and helping and outreach and reaching those and helping those that don't yet know about Torah and Hashem to provide them the opportunity to come back and to know Messiahin. There'll be many people that will start to help us B'zrat Hashem on this journey, on this mission, we should be zayicha, my dear friends, to do, to, to go to work for Hashem, for real. That Hashem put us in this world to work and, to, and to, to give and to share and to love. And with that, that the Torah of Hashem will go forth to the whole world. I'll be zayicha mamish once and for all to Mashiach Tzidkein and Bimheir of Yemenu. Amen. Amen. Have a mamish. Very, very special, special time of Av, of growing. Av means father. It's the time that you could really find your father in heaven. Called to.